Code monkey get up get coffee Code monkey go to job Code monkey have boring meeting With boring manager Rob Rob say code monkey very diligent But his output stink His code not functional or elegant What do code monkey think? Code monkey think maybe manager wanna write login page himself Code monkey not say it out loud, code monkey not crazy, just proud. Code monkey like Fritos, code monkey like Tab and Mountain Dew. Code monkey very simple man, big warm fuzzy secret heart. Code monkey like you. Code monkey like you. What's new, Dino Dudes? It's me, the Meteor Raptor. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> so, welcome to another episode of the Meteor Raptor Reviews. And for some stupid reason, I decided I was going to film this one in front of a live audience. Yeah! <laughs> so, just one thing real quick. This is going to be filmed live, so if you do feel the need to make jokes, just know that if you aren't funny, you're not being funny in front of thousands of people. Yeah! <laughs> Like me every week for the past seven years. Depression. Gross. Ouch. <laughs> okay. Now, for some reason, this is really a movie I never thought I'd get around to reviewing because it's a good movie, don't get me wrong. It's just not my style of movie, I guess. But everyone said, um, the Dino Dudes here just told me, hey, you need to review Titanic. So I'm like, why? <laughs> yes, please do that. Anyhow, we're going to review Titanic. Um, I'm completely blanking on when it came out. I want to say like... 98! Thank you for that. Uh, 1998. Of course, it's directed by the legendary, amazing, and just plain awesome James Cameron, director of such amazing films as the overly, overly hyped Avatar, Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which is still one of the best movies I've ever seen, and one of my all-time favorite sci-fi movies, and one of my all-time favorite horror movies, and one of my all-time favorite sequels, Aliens. That movie is just amazing in almost every regard, and the fact that I haven't reviewed it yet, I'm realizing I need to do that. Maybe there'll be another live episode, I don't know. Yeah! yeah. Right. Wow. Hang on. He's got real meta real quick. <laughs> oh, this is reality. <laughs> Okay, we good? We good? Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Hey, hang on. Camera move. Gotta sit here now. No, don't move it. Okay. You moved it. Thank you. I got you though. Okay. So Titanic as a movie is a very interesting case of Well, when you think about it, a lot of movies these days wanna to seem to adapt some sort of disaster to try and almost capitalize on a truly tragic event that cost many people many lives. When you look at stuff at like uh Sully or that that one about the guys on the train when the terrorists attack, I forget what it's called. What? Yeah, it was like uh, the thir like the thirteen like the thirteen hundred to Boston or something. It's oh, like yeah. a uh, the three fourteen to Paris? <laughs> yes, that one. Three fourteen to Paris. It kinda of seems like Hollywood oh and Pearl Harbor is a bad example of how to do one. It seems like Hollywood for some reason seems to think, you know what? If we take a horrible event where hundreds of innocent people died and make a movie off of it. We can make money off of those people that are dead. And what are they gonna do? They're dead. <laughs> now, that, okay, wow. admittedly, that is a very, very cynical outlook on Hollywood. And to the movie's credit, Titanic is much more a retelling of the tragedy, albeit with some issues I will talk about. So, we should probably talk about this right away, the writing. Uh, it should probably come as no surprise to anyone, Jack and Rose were not real people. <laughs> Wow. And I gotta give them credit though, they're at least decently well-written characters. They're not hateable, they're not despicable, but to me the whole point of Titanic, what I think would have made this movie a bit better, is if they didn't try to create a sort of romantic tension or even, you know, add a villain like they did. I'm just gonna say it now, that whole Pearl subplot really should have been in this, should not have been in this movie. If you wanted to do this right, you could have just had Jack and Rose either already married or dating on the Titanic. That way we could still do the whole fictitious characters going through a real-life tragedy that would ultimately end in a very heartbreaking scene. 
But by trying to give them more of this whole, like, oh, he's a runaway and she's a rich girl who's like a Disney princess, doesn't want to be what the class she was born into, you kind of cheapen the tragedy with the fact that they're not real. Now, let's just take the movie as what it is, a movie. It's still very well written. The characters are very likable. Their romance is incredibly realistic, which is, compared to some movies I've seen as of late, saying a lot. And believe me, the amount of romantic movies I've been forced to watch where these characters have no chemistry whatsoever and no reason to be together, but still are together for some reason, like Fifty Shades, it's just sickening to know that this is what Hollywood wants to try and say romance is. So, major props to Titanic for not only giving us an actually a very kind, gentle, and great relationship, but also with two characters who you think really are good for each other. Now, let's talk about <clears throat> the main reason why you might be here. The whole tragedy of the Titanic. It would be pretty, pretty stupid of this movie to go, yeah, you know what, we're gonna have everyone survive, don't worry. It's gonna be a complete and total retelling of the Titanic. And don't worry, they did that. In the animated Titanic trilogy, yes, that is real. Wow. Yeah, the <laughs> animated trilogy that has pirate sharks, uh, talking whales, <laughs> Atlantis, oh, and everyone on the Titanic surviving. I'm not making this up, Are look sure it up. It's about the Titanic, though? Yeah, it's about the Titanic. Okay. Yeah, it's really stupid, and I have to get to that at some point. This one at least just straight up goes, yeah, a lot of people died. And it's not like a, oh, well, we'll learn our mistake and try again. It's more of a, this is really a tragedy and a good thing we should have learned. You should have been more careful. It's much, very much a cautionary tale told on the big screen. And on that subject, this is a movie to be seen on the big screen. First time I saw it, I watched it at home on a relatively small TV because, well, I wasn't around when it was in theaters. But when they re-released it recently in 3D, I figured why not? You know, I thought the movie was just okay, but I wanted to go see it in theaters. This is definitely a movie that does benefit from theaters due to the camera work. The camera work and the effects. So much of this movie is done practically. Now it is with everything being done in CG, you're just kind of, you're not looking at a movie as much as you're looking at a cartoon with people in it. But Titanic, everything feels real. From the sets, to the costumes, to even the tragedy of the sinking, it all feels like you're actually there. Everything that's done, practically, really helps this movie have an edge of reality to it that not many films do have. Plus, in all the grand sweeping shots, when the camera is being masterfully used by the cinematographers when going around the, the uh, boat, or in some of the parting shots, or just any of the major panning shots or establishing shots, it truly is breathtaking to watch. Now, let's talk about one reason why a lot of people know this movie. The acting. Leonardo DiCaprio... Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, he's pretty good at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah! I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I've seen Leonardo DiCaprio in a bad movie, or give a bad performance, and I'm really happy he finally did win an Oscar for The Revenant, and that movie was amazing. But this is probably one of my least favorite roles he was in. That's yes. not, but keep in mind, Sorry. this is me Blasphemy. saying, this is me saying one of his lesser performances that is still a solid eight out of 10 performance. Um, good save, good save. I'm not saying you turn in a bad performance. I think the character he's playing would have been better suited to somebody not as big. And I kind of get this was the movie that made him massive. But looking back on him now with what he's become, Jack is supposed to be this every man, this just this guy trying to get by, and Leonardo DiCaprio, he does play him very well, but there's just almost an air of almost, I don't know, I don't want to say elitism, but there's something about the way DiCaprio performs Jack's role that kind of makes me think he would have been better as one of the rich people in the Titanic rather than Jack. Now, granted, for what we got, it's still fantastic, I still love it, and I forget the woman who played Rose, she does a fantastic job. She is probably hands down the best actress in the entire movie, and if she has been in other things, I can't say, and I'm sorry for that. Now, with all, of, all that out of the way, let's talk about the parts that I had issues with. I've already mentioned the whole, there's sort of a villain in this movie with that one guy who wants to try and break up Jack and Rose because money and plot convenience. Really? Okay, sorry. My main issue with this movie is keeping on. This is like a two hour, 45 minute movie. I really think it should have at most been two hours, if not shorter. 
Now, I get this was meant to be a massive film event, and I'm not going to fault it for that. But I do think it could have stood to have some more editing to it. There's quite a bit of just people dancing, of people eating, and I get it's supposed to show, look at this amazing thing, amazing creation we've made before it all goes down in flames, but, well, not flames, but you know what I mean. It's some... Um, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know, that's one thing to think about. Another thing... I'm sorry if this is just me, but I don't really get invested in fictional people as much as I as much as I think everyone else does. So when I was watching it in theaters and it got to that very I will admit very tear jerking scene when the ship's going down and you hear and you hear my heart will go on, as well as even seeing the old couple lying in bed embracing each other before they realize they're about to die. I wasn't crying like everyone else. There were people who were bawling their eyes out, and I was kind of there like, yeah, this is sad. And as much as I did like Jack and Rose, at the very end when Jack says, I'll never let go, Rose, I'm like, he's about to die, isn't he? So, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was spoiled before I saw the movie, but I was kind of like, okay, yeah, you're dead. You're not gonna live. And I was thinking, though, the thing is, and I hate having to think like that, because I really like them. I think it would have been better if they both either both lived or both died. As dark as that is, wouldn't it have been nicer that if they both went, and hear me out on this, okay, if they both went, then they could have been together forever. Or, if Jack had lived, then they could have been together anyways. <coughs> It really is just kind of showing how well these characters are written that I'm saying one of my issues with it is that they both are dead so they can't be together. That, I, that, that's, I think it's good film. I honestly don't know. Now, I did mention this. One other thing that I cannot fault this movie for and I think is freaking amazing is the music. Woo. Celine Dion, My Heart Will Go On. It's a true classic. I love that song. It's beautiful. It's, it's moving. Don't cry, man. Pretty much, yeah. You got you. It truly is a very beautiful song. The entire score is made with great grandeur and majesty and great almost horror when the ship starts to go down. So, yeah, I can totally recommend Titanic. Really, I think people who aren't going to enjoy it are people who aren't used to, like, three-and-a-half-hour movies. Like, if you haven't watched, like, Lord of the Rings and stuff like that, you might kind of have an issue with how long this movie is. And that's understandable. There also are some people who want maybe more action or more plot in their story. And yes, Titanic is a very slow build, but it's mostly character driven, so it makes that slow build worth it due to the fact that we actually see very, very realistic human development over the movie. But again, this might not be the film for everyone. Also, if you tend to cry at like anything, then yeah, you're probably gonna cry yourself dry multiple times during the ending. Dry? <laughs> I don't know. Can we ask a question? One minute. Also, if you're like me, then maybe one thing that you might want to not do while watching the movie, especially if you're watching the movie with friends, is the second that the Titanic begins to sink, scream as loud as you can, to show you the power of flex tape, I saw this boat in half! <laughs> I will say this. Yeah. All right. People do not appreciate that when you're making flex tape references while the two old, while the old couple are holding each other in bed before they die. And I will admit <laughs> that you. might have been a bit insensitive on my part, but I'm single, always have been, don't really care about relationships, so hey, maybe I'm just a <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> At the end what of the day, <laughs> Titanic, is, Titanic isn't one of my favorite movies, and I don't think I ever would consider it, but it is a very good movie. So at the end of the day, I can give it a very solid three after claws out of four and on entertainment, and, and without a doubt, a four after claws out of four for quality. So overall, three and a half out of four. Very good chance if you're into movies, you've already seen it. And I'm not sure what's wrong with them. They're laughing, each other. They're laughing to death over there. And I really think I should end this review so I can go check on them. But yeah, you know, it's just, it's a classic. Pretty much everyone's going to see it eventually. It's like the Wizard of Oz or Star Wars. Although I think Wizard of Oz is garbage, but whatever. Oh, yay! Whoa! Sorry. Next time on the Meteor After Live, let's talk about the Wizard of Oz. With that being said, with that being said Anyhow, to everyone watching, thank you for coming out, and this has been the Media Raptor. Thank you, no, thank thank you. you. And I will see all you Dino dudes next time. <laughs> <laughs>